What happens during the preparation of the altar and gifts in the liturgy of the Eucharist? Before we start, we just want to quickly review that there are two main parts of the Mass, the Liturgy of the Word, and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Church teaching places the origin of the Eucharist in the Last Supper of Jesus with his disciples. This video starts the series on the Liturgy of the Eucharist. Here's an overview of the different parts of this liturgy at a glance. The liturgy of the Eucharist begins with the presentation of the gifts and preparation of the altar. At this time, the offertory chant begins. Representatives of the people express their participation by bringing forward the bread and wine that will become the body and blood of Christ. The celebrant blesses and praises God for these gifts and places them on the altar which is the place of the Eucharistic sacrifice. The ministers place the corporal the purificator the chalice the pall and the missal on the altar. We'll explain them one by one. The missal is the book containing the words and prayers used in the Catholic Mass throughout the year. The corporal comes from the Latin word corpus meaning body. This is a square white linen cloth upon which the chalice and paten are placed. The paten is also known as the ciborium containing the smaller host for communion. The corporal is a reminder of the cloth that would have wrapped around Jesus in his tomb, so corporal literally means the cloth of the body. So the body of the Lord is going to rest there just as the body of the Lord was wrapped in a cloth in the tomb. The ciborium comes from the Latin root word chibo, which means food, because we have the communion host which will turn into the body of Christ. The purificator is a white linen cloth which is used to wipe the chalice and pot in which follow communion. The chalice is the cup used to hold the sacramental wine which undergoes transubstantiation, or transformation of substance. End of the sacred blood of Christ during the consecration, more in-depth explanation of this later on. The pall is a square white cover to prevent things from falling into the chalice. On the altar we also have the cruets, one has water and the other has wine. Then the priest offers up the bread. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. We reply, Blessed be God forever. This is a traditional Jewish meal prayer during biblical times, and it is thought that Jesus would have said that actual prayer at the Last Supper. We've inherited that tradition. Then the deacon or priest pours wine into the chalice, and a little bit of water. It's a reminder of Jesus' divinity and our humanity being mixed together. It also speaks about the blood and water which came forth from the side of Christ. When we mix it, it also symbolizes the unity of the church with Jesus. Then the priest or celebrant offers up the chalice as well. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. We reply, Blessed be God forever. This is a beautiful prayer and speaks to us of that very profound mystery of transubstantiation. Then the priest washes his hands. It's a symbolic gesture of needing to be washed by the Lord so that he can be made clean to be worthy of celebrating this liturgy. The priest quietly says, Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. This prayer is from Psalm chapter 51 verse 2. This is a symbolic cleansing because we are all sinners and the priest is no exception. But at this moment when that priest washes his hands, his sins are suspended, so he could actually celebrate the Eucharist. So no matter what that priest has done, you still receive a valid Holy Communion. The priest then says the prayer over the offerings and this concludes the preparation. By the way did you know that according to St. Lawrence Justinian no human tongue can enumerate the favors that trace back to the sacrifice of the Mass. The sinner is reconciled with God. The just man becomes more upright, sins are wiped away, vices are uprooted, virtue and merit increases, and the devil's schemes are frustrated. Thanks for watching and God bless.